Hey there, everybody. After a week out of the office, it's good to be back, and a lot has happened. Of course, we have uh, Wei Yi, who, by the way, is that not the most mature young man you've ever seen, right? Uh, now number 14 in the world after winning the Dan Zhao uh, Classic. We have Rajaba, who took first at the Geneva Grand Prix while nobody was watching. Uh, but the biggest news of all, of course, is that Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura is now streaming and has his own channel uh, for for his games. And, and uh, as the first ever Super Grandmaster, I think, to start his own streaming chess channel, it tells you where the future is headed for chess. And uh, who knows, maybe like other esports and video games, Hikaru Nakamura will be leading the way as Super Grandmasters start their own channels and provide access to their own thought process. If they're going to be playing hours of chess online, might as well do it, right? And... Uh, all right, well, let's dive in. Before we discuss any of these topics, curious to hear your thoughts. Did you watch Hikaru's stream? Uh, if so, how do you think Hikaru did? I know he made fun of me in several moments. That's awesome. Classic, right? I mean, it's, uh, you know, revenge, revenge is best served via Twitch TV, right? I certainly dish it out to him uh, during my shows. Um, did you uh, watch Rajabov uh, draw his way to first place at the Geneva Grand Prix? Just kidding, I actually like Rajabov, um, though not the most exciting tournament. And is Wei Yi actually going to be uh, the, the Chinese Grandmaster that gives them a chance at the world title? They've been trying to grow themselves a, uh, a, a, a top five Grandmaster for about a decade now, but nobody's been able to do it. So three questions for the chat. Is Wei Yi the, the China's great hope? Did you watch the Geneva Grand Prix, and do you care? And uh, if you've checked out Hikaru's stream, let me know how you enjoyed it. But before anything else on the Chess Today show, of course, we solved the Daily Puzzle. I feel like we need a, like, a little animation there, like a boo, right? Like uh, like the Daily Double. Oh, you just got lucky there, audience. It's That's the Daily Double. All right, Daily Puzzle, let's do it. Um, taking a look here, I see a bishop potentially trapped on b6. My queen is under attack. Uh, but with the first most obvious thing to consider when the queen's under attack would be to remove that knight. And after they capture, if I can trade queens and then play c5, likely I'm winning a piece. Uh, without any other reasons to consider attacking the king or doing something else that you would normally assume is more powerful uh, in a puzzle that looks to be pretty straightforward. Uh, and that shouldn't really be underestimated, that you know you really can't just decide you're just going to attack on one side of the board or always assume puzzles or checkmates or all those things. right? you got to the, take what the puzzle gives you. So here, we're going to take on e5, we're going to trade on d8, and the main reason is that we immediately recognize the potential to trap this bishop. And so we, uh, we take, our, take our shot, right? As uh, Alexander Hamilton would say, we're not going to throw away our shot. And with that, we are now going to move on to discussing our news topic. So let's go ahead and start with the, uh, the topic I first asked here about Wei Yi. So um, obviously, I know everyone's excited to get to Hikaru, and uh, certainly we want to discuss uh, the fact that Hikaru actually has a show starting in 25 minutes. So if you're just joining the Chess Today show, and you didn't know that, well, now you do. Don't go anywhere. This is really just a precursor. Hikaru Nakamura, the real star of the show, will be starting a stream uh, momentarily. So, um, Wei Yi, he wins the Dan Zhao Classic and, you know, now reaches number 14 in the world. I, I personally don't know that he has it to get to the the upper elite. And I know that's going to surprise some people. Obviously, he's super talented. Um, and um, his his age, according to China, Chinese official government records, is, uh, <laughs> it's the quotations is, how old is he actually? Let's take a look. So what is his age here? Uh, what, is it, what is his age here? Uh, Wei Yi, they don't have his, okay, he's 18 years old. So if you look at the, if you look at the list of other players here, in the top uh, 20 in the world, Wei Yi, it would, it would stand to reason that Wei Yi has a pretty good chance to be China's, you know, great Chinese hope, right? Um, and and to, to reach the upper echelons of chess and, and maybe eventually challenge for the world title, whether that's Magnus Carlsen or whoever else by then. Um, Again, I, I don't know that he's, he's had enough experience against that top group for us to say whether he will hold his own. There's been really great Chinese talents before. Certainly, he seems to be on pace to be, to be the greatest. He actually just leapfrogged his own countryman, Yu Yang Yi, and the only one left as far as his own uh, peers there in China is Ding Li Ren. Um, but okay, I'm curious to get your thoughts. And so for the first time in the show, as I like to do, let's pop over to the chat 
and see what people think. So, um, Hikaru's stream was amazing. He was so humble. First time I've ever seen him with his hair did. UK Geek, I love that. Thank you. So, yeah, questions for the chat. We're talking about Hikaru's stream, another one coming up, but I'm also asking you about Ding Li Ren. Sorry, Wei Yi. What are your thoughts on, on, on uh, Wei Yi being, being uh, the guy that, that gets China over the top? Um, Yeah, sorry about that, Vsim. We uh, we didn't update the uh, the the name on the Twitch. That wasn't clickbait. That wasn't the intention. Actually, we meant to do chess today first. But yes, for those of you who subscribe to us or follow us on Twitch, who got an email alert and, and it said Hikaru was already live. We apologize for that. Uh, the title was quickly changed after that. So, um, all right, let's see. Uh, if you missed it, yeah, he streamed a few days ago. Uh, he's doing his stream again in about 22 minutes. So, uh, if you if you have any thoughts about the uh, yeah, he, he doesn't have 5K5 followers already, but he does have 5K5 views, right? He, uh, he did one show, and he's already got a lot of viewers, that's for sure. So, all right, any thoughts on the Wei Yi topic I'm, I'm posing here? Um, John HS in the Chess TV, Chess TV chat says he thinks he may become Chinese, China's best, um, or Ding Li Men may remain, but I doubt he reaches the top five. Um, yeah, I think I feel the same way right now. I don't. I don't know that I. And maybe it's because he burst onto the scene right when he was um, fourteen, apparently, right, and and doing awesome, and uh, had you know an immortal game a couple of years ago that was just awesome. Uh, but since then, there's been I, I don't know. There's been a little bit of a Wei Yi withdrawal in my eyes, right? I haven't seen him continue to impress in a way where I feel like once Carlson jumped on the scene, we could never stop talking about him. Um, but it looks like most of the comments in regards to um, to Hikaru is still that everybody everybody is uh, everyone loved Hikaru's stream, awesome stuff. Uh, that's great. Um, uh, Chess for the soul says he doesn't know if he gets China over the top, but it's still quite nice to see him at number fourteen. Certainly, what is the highest ever ranking that a, ch uh, a Chinese uh, chess player has reached? I actually don't know that stat. Maybe one of my staff members watching the show can can give me that. Is Ding Li Ren at number ten currently the highest? I don't think so. I feel like, but who would have been higher? No, not Bu Hong Shi. I don't think Li Chao. I I don't know who's the highest ever Chinese chess player. You see, they've got three. I mean, other than the USA, right, and Russia. I mean, they've got a super strong representing uh, core here in the top twenty, right? I mean, Russia. You know, filling out, filling out. You know, with with Nepo and Svidler and Karyakin, um, Kromnik, of course. You know, they, they've still got the most consistent. I think the USA, you know, is, is the you know having won the Olympiad and you know with three in the top ten is is the is the top. But uh, you know, Magnus holding the Norwegian flag up there, sol solo a solo cheese adventure with Magnus Carlsen, right? Sometimes you're up for a three cheese adventure. Right, like the USA, you want a plethora of flavor on your mouth. Other times, it's a solo cheese adventure, one man, one cheese pizza. All right, so um, all right, well, let's um, yeah, Rapport did beat Wei Yi in a match last year, and and uh, that's that's an interesting point um, from um, from Bobby Tilparov in the uh, in the chat. So. Uh, Pawn Checkmate thinks Wei Yi's going to make 2800 Okay, we'll see. So there's some opinions on that. Let's move on to topic number two. Uh, but before we do, let's go back and, and, and get some more chess involved here, make my daily chess moves as I currently lose this game to Mike Klein. Gosh, I'm terrible at chess. Oh, man. I am terrible at chess. Uh, that's an A pawn sack. What's he doing with that? I'm down a piece, and I'm bluffing at compensation, clearly. Um, but what's the point of a5? Okay, so if I, if I capture a5, he takes on b1. Um, it'd be really fun if I could take with the queen and somehow flip the script over here. But that doesn't seem to be a reality. Nothing to it. At least that, and maybe even just bishop d7, right? Uh, but he can probably actually play queen to d7 and then just march the king up to f7. So, okay, nothing to that. Um, but if I take with the king, what's his point? What's his point? Uh, what's his point? He gives check, and, and uh, I can block with the bishop. He has moves like c3, attempting to win on the spot. I can play a3. The game isn't over. Not Red Rover, at least. Um, 
and he still has to deal with my threats, I guess, on the king side. You know, the only the only actual practical compensation I have is that he, you know, he still isn't developed. I'm surprised by a5 because I felt like probably the easiest thing for Black to do is to just defend the threats on g6. I don't know. Maybe not even. Maybe just ignore it. I, I don't know. Play a move like e6, and if I take, just come up. But maybe he's he's worried that I'm getting some tricks for the piece. I don't know. I don't. I don't know that I I really have much to hold on to here. Um, uh, but but why can't I take the a5 pawn? I don't know. Why not, right? What do you think? Right? Should we get a vote in chat? Just kidding. This is not a team game. It's a solo cheese adventure. Uh, bishop a3 is possible also just to deny it and, and try to keep the bishop on the diagonal. But at this point, because I feel like I'm losing, I'm, I'm tempted, or I have a hard time denying taking a pawn if I think I can steal it and get away with it. Though this, this move order actually is interesting, because now my bishop stays on this diagonal. He still has to deal with g6. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure with, with, accurate, uh, with an accurate approach, I, I have no compensation, or at least limited compensation. But okay, why shouldn't I take this pawn? Bishop takes a5. Rook takes b1 is the only move. King takes b1. If he just moves the queen, I guess that's an idea, but I guess, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll bring my queen out and continue to try to gain some sort of initiative as compensation. So this queen check seems like the only move. Bishop b4. So unless he's winning back the piece on the spot, knight c3 or, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I think that I'm defending everything. So, I mean, so this is awkward. Um, all right, well. I should probably take my time on this. This is why Mike beats me, because if you notice, I have three days per move here, <laughs> right? But Mike just moved, and my instinct is to just make a move instantly right back. And why, why, why spend any time applying any effort at the board? Why do that, right? Oh, hashtag Mr. Coffee Warmer. Oh, it's so delicious. But what can we learn from this? I mean... If I'm down a piece here, what should be my goal in regards to keeping it messy? When you're losing, guerrilla warfare is your friend, right? Um, you know, being messy, hiding in the trees, smoke bombs, right? When you're losing, you want the position to remain as complex as possible. Within reason, right? You're not trying to lose faster, but I mean, you, you, have, to be, you have to be willing to, to mix it up a little bit because you're not trying to have a smooth victory, you're losing. Um, bishop a3, and if he trades on b1, takes on b1, I actually, I, I, like I said, I do feel like I have a little bit of compensation there, but not much. But what happens in a, in a line like, let's say bishop a3 takes and takes, if he tries to go back to defend the pawn, if I do something like this, and then like take here, like I don't know, I mean, do I have any chance with compensation in a position like this? What's the, what's the count? I've got a couple pawns for the piece, and he's not developed. Okay, but here I'm probably losing the, the c2 pawn, and there goes one of those pawns, right? Um, so if he played bishop f5, I might want to, I might have to try to continue to keep it messy. But why not go get the pawn then? That's the thing. Why not go get another pawn for the piece? Hello, McFly. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I don't see a forced win. I don't understand. Takes, shake, and bake. Check. Bishop b4. I'm going to be able to defend the bishop. All right, we're doing it. Bishop a5. There you go, Mike. Instantly your move again, buddy. Didn't take my three days per move. Okay, so that was fun. Let's go back to the chat and see what people are talking about here. Uh, we only have 14 minutes left. The countdown is on till we get rid of Danny Wrench and Hikaru Nakamura comes on the show. I understand what you want. I'm under no illusion, Okay. Um, the pawn grabber, that's right. Hey, Yaz, Yaz taught me well. If you see a pawn, you take a pawn. All right, let's be greedy. And chess greed is your friend, as Uncle Yermo would say. He once told me, he said, now done it. And he, uh, hey, hey, you know, excuse the offensive thing, but this is, this is Uncle Yermo. Done it. You have to know, in chess, greed is your friend. Uncle Yermo told you. 
Okay. Um, what is my rating? Actually, that's funny. So I, I, I just spent a lot of time talking bad about my chest, but let me, let me uh, share with you guys what I did this last weekend. This last weekend, yours truly played in his first tournament in nearly two years. Okay. Um, first tournament, one, two, six, five, nine, eight, three, three. Yes, I had my USCFID memorized. I played in my first tournament in nearly two years since the Millionaire Chess Open, where I did actually pretty well, by the way. So in the Millionaire, in the Millionaire, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I did okay. Where am I here? I didn't, uh, you know, nothing, nothing impressive. Wait, which Millionaire Open is this? This is, yeah, this should be Las Vegas, right? Where am I? Where did I finish? Not, uh, not super high, but I gained some rating points. That was the key. That's the key of what I'm trying to show you. Let's find a wrench on the page. There I am. 87. I gained three points. Okay, so NBD. But this last weekend, I played in the Yeo Pueblo, and I broke 2,500 USCF for the first time. Apparently, the key to getting better at chess is to not give a bleep. Because I, I went to the Yo Pueblo with, with the full intention of just having fun. I mean, I, uh, I took a bye even in the, in the, I took a bye in the, in the third round to take my kids to see the new Spider-Man. Which, by the way, speaking of Marvel movies, so Spider-Man, very surprised. It was a good movie. I, I, was, I was convinced Spider-Man was just going to like totally suck, right? Just a money grab by Marvel. They did a really good job tying it into the overall Avengers universe and sort of, you know, foreshadowing future storylines. I think of all the Spider-Mans I've seen, probably because it's tied into the whole Avengers universe, I'm actually, I was happy about it. So, this is what Danny did in round three on Saturday night. Took a half point by and took the kids to see the movie. Um, I dropped a draw to a 2350 or so in the next round, but, I, but by winning my last round, I tied for first and broke 2500. So, who knew, right? Who knew I could actually get better at chess still. I, I, you know, I didn't know. Um, anyway, so that's not the main point, but I only bring it up because somebody asked me what, uh, what my rating is. So yeah, I broke 2,500. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Thanks guys. That's what I did this weekend. Um, anyway, uh, 2,500 is a huge milestone. And you know, what's funny is it was a huge milestone for me when I was playing chess, but you guys know, I mean, anybody who's followed my chess shows, like I've been 2490 since for like 10 years, <laughs> right? And, and then I've dropped and come back up, but I've never been able to get over the hump. I mean, like it was not, and also in, in fairness, I'm not really a chess professional anymore. I haven't really made an effort. I don't play. I mean, you saw my last tournament was what? It was the millionaire tournament, right? And I only played that event because my team was on site. I mean, um, before that I had played, I had been playing event, like maybe a local thing, like once every couple months, but not really anything big. So I really have not played in almost two full years. So, you know, but uh, 2,500, I think the fact that I broke it is because I didn't really care about doing it. And, and so who knows, maybe that was the right psychology to have. So, um, all right, here we go. Yeah, exactly. This show sponsored by sponsored by Spider-Man. That's right. Uh, yeah, it's crazy, right? As, as Ball M says on Twitch, when you have fun, you do better. Who knew, right? Um, GM Danny Wrench, I don't think so, guys. I don't think so. Maybe, maybe someday in another life, but uh, you know, I, I I don't know that that's going to happen. So, um, but uh, but thanks for the congrats. It was a lot of fun. So last topic, um, actually no. So next next quick topic is uh, we talked about Rajava winning the Grand Prix, and obviously in one of my last Chess Today shows, I had some pretty. I think I was more transparent than you've ever seen, a, you know, an owner, a representative of chess.com be about our feelings regarding Aegon, but not to, not to throw dirt or anything. The goal was just to say, hey, this isn't working and what's going on. And believe me, there was a lot more, you know, we, uh, we don't really get into our personal relationship with them, but having someone being in a position to try to do our best to cover the chess world and give the top players their due, it's very difficult to cover these events and it's getting worse and worse. And we've done that despite the criticism, despite the rumors on social media, despite the heat that we took from people for not challenging Aegon more directly initially. Um, we, you know, we did a lot and invested a lot in that and I'm not getting into all that. I watched my previous Chess Today show if you want the full take, but you know, I don't think a lot of that has been fair or um, respective of the fact that we've put a lot into covering things, even even with not, no other support. And unfortunately, this event was just uh, was just uh, not. It was it was so boring. 
And I don't even know what to say. I mean, not just because the last round was like all draws. I mean, the event itself, I mean, I guess partly it lacked it lacked the big names, right? I mean, other than other than Aronian, um, well, I guess that's not true. I mean, Mabad Yarv and Girov just, I guess the format itself just didn't lead. To, maybe it was just the the uh, fact that it was so difficult to stay in touch with the with the coverage. But hopefully you guys check out our news reports. Rajabov, I do think, is a good guy. One of the good guys in the chess world, I think. Um, I, I don't know that he... Um, I haven't experienced too many rumors, although Hikaru will probably yell at me and say, I don't know what I'm talking about. He usually does that. Um, but okay. So anyway, yeah, Grishuk, somebody posted in the comments that Grishuk seems like a grumpy old man sometimes. I agree, he does. I like that about him, actually. Um, anyway, but okay, enough of the, enough of the stuff about, about news reports that nobody really cares about. Let's go back to talking about uh, getting excited for the one and the only Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura's next stream right here. And, uh, and yeah, maybe I'll stick around. Maybe I'll be one of Hikaru's first victims. But he usually doesn't like to play me. I mean, he talk, Hikaru talks a lot of, you know, he talks a lot of smack and, and says I like to lose to him. But I don't have the worst record in the world against Hikaru. Okay, online blitz. Okay, over the board, I think we've only played like once. Um, you don't believe me? Let's go, let's go check out what my record is against Hikaru online. How do we do that? So first thing, we go to our own profile. I think that's the easiest way to do it. And then look up GM Hikaru. And Hikaru said himself that I'm underrated. Um, and, uh, and so playing me when his bullet ratings get really high is not the best investment of his time, right? Because I think there's a chance I'll pull an upset from time to time. But where, where does it show your... Oh, that's the wrong guy. In fact, we should probably close that guy for impersonating. So let's see. Me versus... Okay. So, I have 10 wins, 38 losses, and 2 draws. Eat your heart out, Eric Hansen, right? That's a better record against Takaro than most people have, all right? So, you can, you can say what you want, but that is not the... I will take that any day of the week. I would take that if you doubled his win total, okay? <laughs> because that's how good he is. You know, when, when he beats, a, beats Eric Hansen, like 87 to whatever it is, right? Anyway, so I'm just saying, right? We love Hikaru, and uh, and also, I would I would guesstimate that half of those games I was streaming and doing commentary at the same time. So I'm just throwing down the gauntlet, baby. All right, bring it on. It's on. It's on. To the to the Chess Today show, it's on. Okay, that's all I'm saying is that I don't think I have the worst. Now, okay, there's no denying I'm not even in Hikaru's universe, let alone Lee. But all right, Mike has already moved. What's going on? So he's gonna take. I'm gonna take. Is Mike gonna play the game out? What's going on, Mike? Where's where's what am I missing here? How are you beating me? I don't know that I don't know that Mike has the goods. I think he's bluffing. And I'll take a pawn. A pawn is a pawn, especially when you're losing. So anyway, um what is what is Eric Hansen's record against Hikaru actually? Let's uh let's figure this out. Let's figure this out. Because I know people want to know this stuff. Daniel Wrench, so what is my record against Eric Hansen, first of all? I think it's probably worse than my record against Hikaru. Okay, two wins, 16 losses, zero draws. That's my record against Hikaru. But I wish there was a quick way to find out, like, matchup scores. Okay, so let's look up my, not my games, others' games. Username. Hikaru versus Eric Hansen. That would be a really sweet feature request. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a note of that right now. Again, I know you guys think that we ignore these things, but we don't. Um, it would be super sweet. I'm going to make a feature request right now because I want everyone else to do this. You guys have direct connections, and Chess.com cares more about what you think than than anyone, all right? Um, so, uh, cool feature request when, when doing a search of two usernames versus each other if the top of the page instantly showed the lifetime record of Hansen versus Nakamura, Wrench versus Nakamura, etc. Perhaps right here we would maybe like highlight like I guess it's showing Hikaru's games, but if you do but if you do sort of a search of two players, I think it would be super cool if it showed if it showed like a like a lifetime score, right? If it showed like a lifetime score here, uh, get rid of this. Just something right here, you know. 
I think people would love that. I would love to instantly know. Maybe there's a way. May, often you guys know my own site better than I do. But to me, that would be super cool. So I know that they've probably... How many times have they played, right? Like over a thousand times? I don't even know how often Hikaru and Eric play, but it's, it's too often. And often, uh, very rarely PG if you watch the Chess Bros stream. But okay. Um, anyway, this has been a lot of fun. I, I'm going to encourage everybody, don't go anywhere. Literally, in just a couple minutes, we have Nakamura uh, taken on the world and Nakamura's knockouts. Um, and uh, it would be super cool to have a, a quick lifetime record. And, uh, and I think we'll work on that. That'll be cool. Um, it's something I've never really thought of. I guess how often do people really care about what two other people's lifetime record is? Maybe there's a way to do it. There's an instant way to see your record, but I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll, ask, a, I'll ask a staff member. Um, and uh, of course, it's my website, but I can't just you know I can't just snap my fingers. You know, we'll do it. Of course. You know what? There's never a lack of cool things to do, all right? So it, there's features and there's all kinds of things to do. But just because you, you make a feature and, and other sites have it or, I mean, theoretically, our site was around, you know, long after ICC. Technically, didn't every, every, every chess website copy fix, right? I mean, it's just like silly. Like the whole, I mean, I guess it makes for good troll conversation. Uh, but, um, you know, if you want to rank the order of sites that really burst onto the scene, half of them aren't even here anymore, right? I mean, you had... You have like Fix, you have ICC, you had Chess Park. How many of you remember Chess Park, right? Um, I mean, there's still some that are around. Uh, you have Play Chess, and then you had Chess.com. For a long time, it was just Chess.com, ICC, and Play Chess as like the big three. And then in the last few years, you have Lee Chess, you have Chess24. So, I mean, theoretically, Chess24, Lee Chess, all those sites came after Chess.com, ICC, whatever. So, are you copying a site just because you make an ability to play chess online? I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. So, uh, but it does make for good troll conversation. So, go at it, guys. It's 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 fun when you do that with each other. Um, we did that yesterday. We have the queen versus rook mate, according to Checkmate three one four one. Bobby Toparov says Hikaru and Eric have eighteen pages worth of games. It's just insane, right? I mean, it's so crazy. Um, yeah, no, I know. I, who have I played the most? I actually don't know. I think the person who's played the most chess on chess.com has to be GM Joey. But anyway, we're going to go and uh, remind you that it's time for me to get off. It's time for me to welcome Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura. He's out to lunch, but no longer. He's in, uh, I'm pretty sure he's in Florida right now, back home in the States. So probably about one o'clock for him as I, as I wrap things up. Have fun. I don't know what Hikaru's plans are for today, if he's going to dive into Bullet, if he's going to be taking on members like you in the chat, or if he's going to be looking for a title player like me to destroy and humiliate. I'm open to all possibilities, but Hikaru, it's your show now, so I'm going to I'm gonna hop off, and real quick, I'm going to confirm with my team that he's ready, and um, are we ready to rock this thing? I don't want I don't want to lose you guys and your attention. Um Although I know you've been you've been counting the seconds. This is your last chance. Go get a snack. Get away from the Chess Today show. So again, if you're watching this on YouTube or a replay and you didn't know that Akara Nakamura is now streaming uh, for Chess.com, but really for himself, and we're just helping him do everything we can to help grow the brand that is Akara Nakamura um, because he's awesome, and I do believe as the as the world's first Super Grandmaster to be streaming like this that he's setting the tone. I, I predict we will have many more doing it, um, as much as that sounds crazy at first. People always have this old school mindset of grandmasters. Like, you can't get a grandmaster to do this, or they don't do that, or they can't learn software and do this. Like, no, what are you talking about? They're like some of the smartest people on the planet, and I think the best way to grow chess is to have those who are the most popular allow themselves to be out in the limelight and play chess. So why not have Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura and everybody else streaming? Why not, I say to you. Each eSports superstars do it, right? All right, so there you go. With that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off and get out. Hikaru Nakamura will be on. Let's, what's the over-under before he makes a joke about how much I talk during the show before just getting off and letting him stream? I'm going to put 30 seconds, and then we're going to watch together. All right, everybody, peace out. Enjoy Hikaru's stream.